Blessed be God, the Holy Trinity, three in one. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, great creator, restorer of all things, be present with us as we restore and renew the buildings of this church, that they may continue to be a place of welcome, love, and peace for this community. Strengthen the bonds within our parish during this time and invigorate us for mission to serve your world and share the message of belovedness to all who need to hear it. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading is a reading from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, that it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. God. Okay, Psalm 89. Let us say the psalm together in unison. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the first shout. They walk the Lord in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, the Lord is our Savior, ruler, the Holy One. 
one against Israel is our aim. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. But just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you get then from the things of which you were now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been free from sin, slave to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity, who was and is and is to come. Amen. You all have probably heard that I am a member of the Brantford Rotary Club. Before coming to Brantford, I knew nothing about Rotary. When I got here, it seemed like a good way to get out into the community, and I really liked the people. It was, and I still do. Rotary itself began as a small group of businessmen in Chicago meeting over lunch in 1906 to build friendships and to be of service. The idea took off and now Rotary is all over the world and does really good work. The over one million Rotarians work for peace and the eradication of disease, particularly polio. They build schools and dig wells and much more. 
Trinity is partnering with the Brantford Rotary to dig a well at a school in Uganda this year. It's very exciting. Two things that I really appreciate about Rotary are the motto, service above self, and the guiding principles of the four-way test, which goes like this. Of the things that we think, say, or do, one, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? I'm gonna leave Rotary here right now and jump to the gospel. The 10th chapter of Matthew is all about Jesus sending his disciples out to share the good news, to heal the sick, cast out demons, and he gave them the power to do those things. These unqualified followers were sent out with no credentials in total vulnerability. They were going to towns and villages where Jesus' name might not even be known. They were to go in complete trust that what they needed would be provided. They were to expect to be welcomed and prepared if they were not. They were to go and knock on doors and say, I'd like to share some good news with you. Have you heard about Jesus? I know we've all had that experience at some point. They were to tell people that the kingdom of heaven was suddenly closer than they ever knew. As always, the question is begged, what does the kingdom of heaven mean? For Jesus and the prophets before him, it meant a world of peace, freedom, of equality in God's eyes and in human society. In the kingdom of heaven, there is no poverty, no slavery, no unemployment, no hatred. That means that the news about the dawning of the kingdom is good news to people who have been experiencing those things. Now, the disciples probably didn't go to the big, rich house up on the hill, because all of those things just mentioned might not seem like good news to the people in power. Good news to them might be something like, don't worry, nothing's going to change. I think that Jesus wants his good news to be good news for everyone. However, for the kingdom to come, things have to change first. That becomes the hard part. And that is where something simple, like the Rotary four-way test, comes in handy. It starts with truth. Well, right off the bat, that has become complicated. Truth is often subjective. What is good and true for me might be a painful status quo when seen through someone else's eyes. Truth and facts are all jumbled up right now. So it's good to have a starting place for truth, capital T. God's love for all people seems like a solid premise to me and a good place to start all of your thinking. When it comes to facts, we all have to question what we accept in these perilous times. Don't believe just one source, one image, one advertisement. Is it fair to all concerned? This is also a tough one, and it requires us to do some work, to understand various sides of an issue, to understand context, and make some judgments based on that starting place of the truth of God's love for everyone. One consistent theme running through the Bible is God's 
preference for the powerless poor, the vulnerable, and the outcasts. It's important to keep that in mind as well. However, a rich person might not think that it is fair to have to give up some riches to share what they have earned through hard work. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? It does seem to me that that is in line with God's desire for us. It was announced at, by, to the shepherds at Jesus' birth. Peace on earth and goodwill to all people. The kingdom must be filled with it. So any work that strives to break down barriers between people so that friendships can grow seems like good news. And the last test, will it be beneficial to all concerned? In a world marred by inequality and injustice, people who are treated poorly will always struggle to be free. People who hold power that keeps inequality and injustice in place will always have to be defending themselves and their positions. That leaves a world in constant strife, usually escalating toward violence. God's kingdom is beneficial for all because all are freed. The battles for supremacy are no more. Then peace is possible. So you can see the offer of Jesus' good news isn't like being given a pony. It can only be accepted with our joining in the building of God's kingdom here on earth. That's why we are here, each of us doing our part as we can. My question to you is, does that sound like, does that feel like good news to you? and confess our faith using the words of the ancient church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Let us all sit back, take a nice deep breath, and enter into prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are your people gathered to be your church, to take the good news out into the world, to be heralds of peace. Strengthen us to do this work with courage and joy. many blessings of this life, for all who work to heal the sick, those who dwell in research labs seeking answers, for beautiful summer days and all the other blessings of this planet. May we be good and careful stewards of all these things. God of mercy and compassion, we lift up before you this day all who suffer body or mind or spirit, those who are sick, those who struggle to be free. May they all know the presence of your powerful love and be filled with your grace. see no longer, and those known only to you. May they all find welcome and peace at your table.
ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Um, one very short announcement. Um, next week, the worship team, the videographers, we're all taking a week off. So we invite you to find worship, possibly at the National Cathedral with their live stream worship. Um, and then we will see you back here the following week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God. To deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ, given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints into the, and from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor Glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. of God for the people of God. Dearest Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in this holy sacrament. 
we love you above all things and desire to receive you within our souls and our lives. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you, together with your faithful people gathered as we are able. Let us never be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May God's blessing be with you. May Christ's peace be within you. May the Spirit's love and inspiration fill you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.